they're off. Caught stealing a step slow to start. Marnesia's big boy broke well. Here comes Curlin on the inside, and Curlin will go up and after the lead with Winstrella. Marnesia's big boy is outside of them, and then include the dude in fourth. Then comes Lissel and Muse to the inside, San Geronimo. Senor Enrico is second last, and caught stealing trails nine lengths off the lead as Curlin heads up the back stretch with Winstrella, and to the outside, Marnesia's big boy close up running in third. First quarter, 22 and three fifth seconds. Break of four and a half to Lissel and Muse racing inside of Include the Dude down toward the inside Senor Enrico San Geronimo and Caught Stealing are in the back as they round the far turn and it's Curlin and Curlin sprints clear to a two length lead while still in hand on the far turn Curlin opening up three Winstrella and Marnesia's big boys, second and third, four lengths back. Then Senor Enrico, followed by Lissel and Muse, a half mile and 45 and two. And at the top of the stretch, it is Curlin and Rafael Bejarano racing in the middle of the track with a six length lead. And then Winstrella to the inside, followed by Marnesia's big boy, Curlin. Wow! He's 14 lengths in front. Then Winstrella, Marnesia's big boy, and Senor Enrico. But look at Curlin. Curlin romped. Winstrella was second. Then came Marnesia's big boy and Senor Enrico. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Rebel. And quickly, Exchanger bounces out there for the lead. Down along the inside, flying first. Class cruises on up, though, and takes it away. Between those two, UD Ghetto is third. Teufelsberg is at the rail in fourth. Curlin is in the middle fifth. Officer Rocket now sixth, followed by Sumac going ballistic and trailing. Want to be included at the rail. On the turn, and Exchanger has the short lead over flying first class. Two lengths back to Teufelsberg. Curlin inches up into fourth, followed by UD Ghetto. Officer Rocket, a gap of four to Sumac. Going ballistic and want to be included. The opening quarter, 23 and two. On the back stretch, and that's Exchanger leading by two and a half. Flying first class, still second by three. Teufelsberg third. Officer Rocket shoots up now and moves into third. Teufelsberg is fourth. Curl into the outside is fifth. Followed out there by UD Ghetto. They get past the half mile in 47 and three. The leader is still Exchanger, but now flying first class and Edgar Prado move up to challenge. Officer Rocket sits the rail in third, moving up between horses. Teufelsberg, Curlin on the outside, and now they move on the final turn. Exchanger's got the lead, flying first class to second. Teufelsberg third, Curlin four wide in fourth. Officer Rocket is now fifth. They get past the three quarters in one, 12 and two. Here they come into the stretch of the Rebel Stakes. The real running begins here. Flying first class, the leader and Curlin takes off after him on the outside. It is Curlin who takes command. Flying first class to second. Teufelsberg running third at the rail. Exchanger is fourth, but Curlin quickly like a shot opened up a four length lead. Officer Rock is gonna make a run at him on the inside. It is Curlin under a hand ride. Robbie Alvarado finally asks him the little end. Curlin very impressively is gonna take the Rebel by about five lengths. Officer Rocket was second, Teufelsberg third, going ballistic got up for fourth. The mile in the 16th, a minute 44 and three fifths second. Number one is Sedgefield, named for an Alabama plantation where owners Tommy and Bonnie Hamilton competed in bird dog trials. 24-year-old French-born Julian Leperu's heart pounding right now in his first derby. Number two, Curlin, named for Charles Curlin, a freed slave who fought for the Union in the Civil War and was the great-grandfather of part owner Shirley Cunningham, Jr. Curlin sold for a reported three and a half million following his first win, now three for three by a combined 28 and a half lengths. Number three, Zanjero, the name means watermaster in Spanish. A $700,000 Keeneland yearling purchase who was a close-up third in that track's bluegrass stakes. Number four is Storm in May, a hunch bet considering the weather we had here yesterday. Maybe so. No protection, you'll notice, for that blind right eye on Storm in May. It's the first derby for Kaplan the trainer and Juan Leva, 23-year-old native of Mexico City. I'm a wild and crazy guy, ridden by Mark Guidry. It's his last derby. He got his 5,000th winner on Friday. He'll retire this summer. Number six is Cowtown Cat, named for Fort Worth by some of the Texans involved in ownership. 19-year-old Fernando Harrell was fourth in the derby on Jazzle last year, then won with that horse in the Belmont. 
Cowtown comes in off wins in the Gotham and Illinois Derby. Number seven, Street Sense. Can he break the jinx? He won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile here by ten lengths, but no winner of that race has taken the Derby. Calvin Burrell has won over 4,000 races, but 0 for 4 at the Kentucky Derby. Eight is hard spun. A dream come true, says the Cowboy, Larry Jones, a Kentucky native in his first derby, in ditto for Mario Pino, who has ridden nearly 5,900 winners. Hard spun has had a six-week layoff since winning the Lanes in. Number nine, liquidity. After a couple of disappointing races, Doug O'Neill is trying something new. Look at his bridle. It's called a sure win and is designed to keep the bit up high in his mouth. Number 10, Teufelsberg, the Devil's Mountain in Germany. A $9,000 yearling who could give Stuart Elliott a slice of history. He would join Willie Sims as the only riders to win the Roses on their first two mounts. Elliott, of course, on Smarty Jones in 2004. Looks like Teufelsberg feeling good as he kicks a little bit. 11, Buana Bull, Northern California based. Son of Holy Bull, the sire of Giacomo. Winner of the California Derby and El Camino Real, but fifth in the Santa Anita Derby. Number 12, no biz like showbiz. Elizabeth Volando turned down a big price for this colt, named because her late husband Tommy published dozens of Broadway scores. No biz winner of the Wood Memorial. 13, Sam P., the human namesake, 87-year-old Sam P. Burton, who flew the hump over the Himalayas in World War II. The equine Sam P. has never gotten over the hump. Third is the favorite in the Santa Anita Derby. 14, Scat Daddy. That's Todd Pletcher's name for half-owner James Catorcio. The Colt was hot at Gulfstream, winner of the Fountain of Youth and Florida Derby five weeks ago. 15, Tiago, Giacomo's little brother, named for the son of Sergio Mendez, one of Jerry Moss's artists at A&M Records, and woke up big time in the Santa Anita Derby. 16, Circular Key. John Velasquez chose this Colt as Pletcher's top rider. Johnny 0 for 7 at the Derby. It's been eight weeks since Circular Key won the Louisiana Derby. 17 is Stormello, bred, partially owned and trained by Bill Curran, who took him cross-country for a second in the Fountain of Youth and fourth in the Florida Derby. Two-time Derby winner Kent Sormo up. 18, any given Saturday, ridden by Garrett Gomez, who led the country with $20 million in purses last year. His fourth attempt in this race, and now on a coast, who most recently was third in the Wood Memorial. 19 is Dominican. Dominican, the gelding, and the operation has made him an improved horse for trainer Darren Miller. Only two starts this year, both wins, including the bluegrass by a nose over street sense. And number 20 is Great Hunter, Corey Nakatani, in his 13th derby on Great Hunter, looking for his first win in this classic. Great Hunter fifth with a rough trip in the bluegrass stakes at Keeneland. Those are the horses, the 100... Last of them all will be Great Hunter and Corey Nakatani aloft. Ready for the start. They are in the gate. And they're off in the Kentucky Derby. And Turtlesburg breaks like a shot. And hard spun with speed too. And Cowtown Cat has some early speed. As a crush of horses passes beneath the twin spires for the first time. And it's hard spun to be the early leader. Here's Stormello on the far outside. He'll be caught wide going into that first turn. In between horses. Turtlesburg right there third. Cowtown Cat up and on the pace between horses fourth. On the far outside, Scat Daddy is running in fifth. Setchfield sixth toward the inside. No biz like showbiz is seventh in between horses. Any given Saturday is now eighth. Liquidity is ninth toward the inside. Dominican runs in tenth. Great Hunter is eleventh. Sam P is thirteenth. Curlin is fourteenth in the opening half mile here. Moana Bull is fifteenth. Zen Harrow is sixteenth toward the inside. Tiago moves to seventeenth. Circular K is eighteenth. He's about twenty lengths from the lead. And then down toward the inside, it's Storm and May. Street Sense is second to last. Street Sense is the 19th of 20 as they continue down the backstretch run. The last of them all is I'm a wild and crazy guy. And the speed is tough here, a 46 and one opening half mile as hard spun bowls along as they cross into the final half mile of the Kentucky Derby. Teufelsberg is second on the outside. Sedgefield tucked away toward the bail third. Stormello is fourth on the outside and now beginning to 
events. No biz like showbiz. Any given Saturday is right there. On the far outside, Great Hunter is launching a bid. He's moving wide as they approach the top of the stretch. And there's Street Sense with a huge move on the far turn. And Calvin Morrell saving ground every step of the way. But it's hard spun to catch as they come off the turn. A mile and 37 flat. And Street Sense draws alongside as they move headlong into the final furlong. And Street Sense has roared from 19th position to first in the Derby. Hard spun ties the hole for second. And then further back in Sense Field on every given Saturday. And here is Street Sense. A stretch running sensation to win the Derby by two. Hard spun was second. Curlin finished third. And I'm a wild and crazy guy was fourth. The final time for this Derby, two minutes and two seconds. Street Sands breaks the jink, the first winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile in 22 years to have taken the Kentucky Derby. Calvin Burrell, very popular second. Knows he's going to make up some ground. He never came off the rail until right there as he comes into the stretch. He's got to come around. Hard spun. He's taken two strides to hard spun's one right here. Wants to drift in just a little bit. He showed a tendency to do that in the bluegrass stage. He knows that that rail is his guide. Calvin Burrell switches to his right-hand whip right there. Of course, getting a little bit late there switching back into his left lead maybe lost his focus a little bit once he made the lead but what maybe, a performance maybe because calvin was bouncing around on his back already <laughs> might have been why he lost so focus and hard spun a game second he answered some questions that he's for real as well but street sense no question who was best today calvin looks nobody's there hard spun left in his wake so let's celebrate a little bit as Street says hey what's going on i'm supposed to be running here and Tar carl nasker that great and here are the horses for the Preakness. Number one, Mint Slulip, Maryland-based colt from Dowell and Bales, the same team that sent Scrappy T to the Preakness runner-up spot and nearly wiped out a fleet Alex two years ago. Two wins at Laurel, his first race at Pimlico, first Preakness ride for Alan Garcia. Number two, Exchanger. There he is. Trainer Mark Schumann has already won nine races here at Pimlico this meet, ridden by former Maryland jockey uh, Ramon Dominguez, who has four wins on the card. This is the only horse with a win over the Pimlico track. He scored by five in the Tessio Stakes in April. Number three, Circular Key, named for a popular spot in the Sydney, Australia Harbor. Todd Pletcher still looking for that first Triple Crown win. Six in the Derby off an eight-week layoff. Pletcher's best finish from his five Derby starters. Number four is Curlin, racing in different silks than we saw two weeks ago on the Derby. The multiple ownership group alternate silks. These are the Midnight Prize stable colors. The Derby, his first loss in four starts, first time he had been pressed, and he uh, made that late move to finish third. Number five is King of the Roxy. From an $8,000 Keeneland yearling to a reported $350,000 sale after winning his first race, he's earned over $400,000. Winner of the Hutchison, second in the Santa Anita Derby, then pointed for this race. Number six is Flying First Class, who cashed in an upgrade from Coach to get here to the Preakness. He's the 32nd Preakness starter, a record for Wayne Lucas, who's won this race five times. He won the Derby trial three weeks ago. Number seven, Hard Spun, nearly wore the roses two weeks ago if only Street Sense had not gotten through on the rail. First Preakness for Larry Jones. He wants Mary Opino, Maryland's all-time leading rider, who just passed Jerry Bailey for 15th on the all-time list to stay just off the early speed. Number eight is Street Sense, our Big Daddy Rabbit, as Calvin Burrell calls it, because he loves carrots. Last week, Burrell made the mistake of feeding another horse a carrot first. Street Sense pawed the ground, and when Burrell approached, bit him. Burrell says he shot a daddy rabbit, and the horse hung his head, but Calvin gave him the carrot anyway. And number nine is C.P. West, Edgar Prado, who heroically pulled up Barbaro here last year, returns to the track where he won 14 riding titles. C.P. West, trained by Nick Zito, who saddled Louis Couture's to win the 96 Preakness. This colt most recently was second in the Wither Stakes. And those are the horses for the 132nd running of the Preakness Stakes, the race is up next on the outside cp west with edgar prado who was aboard barbaro a year ago today they're in the gate for the preakness and they are
Exchanger gets off to a good start, so too King of the Roxy is there. Hard spun and flying first class, and CP West is with the Vanguard. Under the line for the first time, and it is flying first class. Exchanger's there to his inside. Hard spun going to be caught three wide going into that clubhouse turn. He's trying to tuck in behind there, and yes, he's got a good spot. Hard spun runs in third. King of the Roxy is fourth. CP West is fifth on the outside. Curlin is sixth, followed by Street Sense on the outside. Mint Swope toward the rail. Street Sense forced to take to the outside there. And the last of them all is Circular Key. So they make that way into the back stretch run now. And it is Exchanger who leads the Preakness Field. Flying first class there on the outside. And it's five lengths back to Hardspun third. The quarter in 22 and four. Here's the half. 45 and three fifth seconds. Gut wrenching fractions here. Up the back stretch run. Five furlongs to go. Exchanger shortly. And there goes Hartspun. Hartspun makes an early and aggressive move for the lead. And now he's in front as the field moves into the far turn. CP West runs in fourth. King of the Roxy is now fifth. And then it's three lights back. Curlin is rushing in sixth. Mitch Lord sudden toward the inside. Street Sense is eighth. And he's still 12 lengths from the lead. Circular Key trails the field. Around the far turn. Three quarters in one. Oh, nine and four. Hartspun leads the pack. Leads it by a length. CP West is pressing, and there goes Curlin with a bull run on the outside, and Calvin Farrell threading his way through on the rail with Street Sense. They are now fourth. Another big move on the turn for the Derby winner, and the field turns for home. Hard spun trying to get it out, and here comes Street and Sense now into the breach, and on through to the lead, and Curlin's to his outside. Street Sense in front at the eighth hole. Curlin giving his all, a length and a half behind, and by the way, Hard Sense Fun is third, coming out to the finish, Street Sense, here comes Carlin, Carlin surging, Street Sense in deep water, too close to call, too close to call, a race of the whip from Robbie Alvarado, he thinks Carlin has defeated Street Sense in the shadow of the wire, it was very, very close, and the final time equaling the fastest Preakness ever. Win it. That's a freeze frame, that mirror that you can see is kind of blurry, but it is the official finish. And you hear the crowd roar as they take a look at the replay as well. Here are the Freakness history. He's out in front, takes the clear lead here. And uh, with Street Sense and Curlin closing on him. Calvin Burrell coming through on the inside. And with the, I think that Curlin was actually pulling up when he made the lead. Once he saw his competitor, Street Sense, make the lead, he dug back in. He wasn't worried about the crowd. He wasn't worried about the noise. You see him pin in his ear and just come back like a locomotive and nail Street Sense right on the money. Just in the last stride, and Robbie Alvarado knows it. The Cajun jockeys run 1-2. Here it is, right to the finish. Watch this last stride. Just get him in front to win over the Derby champion Street Sense. The official photo shows you that it is a, a short head victory for Curlin over Street Sense. And the ground level, you see Calvin Burrell sneaking a peek at Curlin. He knows Curlin is coming. You heard him tell Bob that. Left hand whip. Curlin driving. Robbie Alvarado hoping that the finish line is going to be just far enough away he can get there. Robbie, uh, 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 Calvin Burrell is out of goggles right there. And I'm telling you what, he's squinting a little bit right there. There's a lot of debris that's coming back on this racetrack, and it's sticking to him. He's out of goggles. and. Uh, that's not a that's not a fun thing to happen when uh, that sand's coming back. I don't know how they're hard spun with a new rider can get it done or this indeed is the day of the filling. All those questions Brandon just a few minutes and we think the rain can hold off. There is Curlin labeled a freak very early in his three year old campaign after not racing as a two year old. You saw Robbie Alvarado use his whip there to wipe uh, just a little bit of sweat off of the withers there of, of Curlin. But it's a humid day. It is very humid. And, and, and that's really nothing to... I think what you're going to want to watch, you're going to want to watch Curlin. It's the first order of business coming out of the starting gate because he has a penchant, as he did in the Preakness, where he stumbled at the start, maybe not breaking that sharply from the starting gate, putting himself at a tactical disadvantage. That's what happened in the it, it, But if it happened in the Preakness where it's more devastating to a horse like him, and he overcame it, I wouldn't worry if it happened in the same manner, the slight manner that it happened today. Obviously, uh, Robbie doesn't want that to happen. He was 14th in the Derby, though, after getting off with a slow start. They can't be 14th today. But he didn't break bad then. He just right. got shuffled back. This is one I, I want to see Hard Spun leaving the gate, and I want to see what C.P. West to his direct inside does, and Slew's Tizzy also to his inside. 
If I'm Garrett, I want one of those two to lead the way. That's the next thing. You've got to watch the four, five, and the six coming out to see the pace interplay there between CP West, Lou Stizzy, and Hard Spun. And then I think you need to watch Rags to Riches to see if she gets a jump early on Curlin. I think she showed more speed in the Kentucky Oaks than Curlin has shown in any of his two turn races this year, and that could put her at a tactical advantage. Does she have the quickest turn? Curlin going in deep. Watch him at his break. Watch his behavior in the gate. He had some issues all along in his career with that, but he seems to be good. CP West. Edgar Prado on him being the one that prompted Mario Pino to, to move a little bit early, so we'll see where he stacks up into the first turn. Let's tee it up. All the questions about to be answered in Belmont 139. Back up to Tom Durkin. And there's the Philly in the field. Rags to riches. The crowd roars. Ready for the start of the 139th Belmont Stakes. And they're off. Oh, and the Philly bobbled at the break. Rags to riches. Stumbled coming out of there. And C.P. West comes out in strides. Loose Tizzy is there. Hard spun to their outside. And from the back, it's Curlin. And Rags to riches out in the middle of the track there. Then Tiago and Ava Wild and Crazy Guy. So they make their way for the first turn. And Edgar Prado will keep C.P. West well off the rail. Sluice Tizzy is very eager to get to that lead on the outside. Curlin up close today through the opening quarter that was a tepid 24 and 3 fifth seconds. Hard spun is right alongside Curlin. And it's two lengths back. And the Philly Rags to Riches is fifth, followed by Tiago at the rail. And seven or eight lengths back to the trailer. I'm a wild and crazy guy who's just lumbering along in the early stages of this mile and a half classic. So they make that turn into the backstretch run. The pace has been sensible the opening quarter mile. And the half was 50 seconds flat. It's just a bit of a crawl here in the early stages of the Belmont. And Sluice Tizzy is the leader. Sluice Tizzy in front. CP West right there. Hard spun up close. Hard held while third. On the inside is Curlin. Just inside of the Philly rags to riches. Tiago is only five and a half lengths from the leaders. Seven lengths back to stretch running. I'm a wild and crazy guy. Three quarters of a mile in 115 and one. Now the field is approaching the far turn. A long way to go yet. CP West, the riders have been very patient, not making a move. There's five furlongs to go. Their position's relatively unchanged. CP West, the leader. Sluice Tizzy is second. Hard spuns in a perfect position on the outside. Curlin could get bottled up on the inside. Rags to riches in the clear fifth. Only three lengths from the lead. And Tiago is beginning to roll now. He's only three lengths from the front. They're midway around the far turn. Five of them within four and a half lengths of each other. And the leader is C.P. West. Nothing left for Slows Tizzy. Here comes Hardspun. And Curlin is coming on throwing between horses. And Rags to riches is coming with a four wide sweep. And Tiago is in behind them. And at the top of the stretch, a Philly is in front of the Belmont. But Curlin is right there with her. These two in a battle of the sexes in the Belmont States. It is Curlin on the inside. Rags to riches on the outside. A desperate finish. Rags to riches and Curlin. They're coming down to the wire. It's going to be very close. And it's going to be a Philly in the Belmont. Here's a Belmont history. Wow. Girl power rules the day at the Belmont. Not just the first Philly in 102 years, but the first ever at a mile and a half. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. And Brother Bobby racing for the lead from his inside post. Here's Lawyer Ron on the outside, who's up in the second early on, followed by Sun Kingdom Political Cup Force is running in for it. Indy Wind is at the back of the pack. Curlin is second to last in the early stages here. And Malibu Moonshine is the trailer. So a long shot leader here, Brother Bobby and Lawyer Ron. He's very keen today. He's tugging away there at Johnny Velasquez. They're right up and on the pace. A pace of a quarter mile in 24 and one-fifth seconds. And the gray political force is raiding back in third. And the Preakness winner, Curlin, is in the clear on the outside for it. Sun King's now running in fifth, raiding five lengths from the leaders. And then it's Indy Wynn and Malibu Moonshine. So down the back stretch run, Brother Bobby... Lawyer on well out into the track after a half mile in 47 and four-fifths seconds. 
And Velasquez continues to try to settle down. Lawyer Ron right up and on the pace. Political force, Justin behind the lead third. And then Robbie Alvarado hasn't moved a muscle yet on Curlin. They're rating well while fourth, about four lengths from the lead now, as they round the far turn with a half mile to go. Three quarters up in one eleven and three. And it is Brother Bobby, still the long shot leader. Royal Ron right off his flank. Curlin is poised in third with three furlongs to go. Political force is fourth. Sun King in an all-out drive is now fifth. Then in the win on the far outside. And now the field turns for home at the top of the stretch here at Belmont Park. And it's Lawyer Ron to take the lead as they turn for home. Curlin, though, is right there with them on the outside. Brother Bobby throws in the towel. Political force is third. And here's that showdown. Lawyer Ron and Curlin with one for one to go in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. It's Lawyer Ron fully extended. Curlin running his heart out today. Down to the finish. Lawyer Ron. Curlin coming with those giant strides to defeat. Lawyer Ron, Carlin wins by a head in an exhilarating stretch run here, defeating Lawyer Ron in the Jockey Club Gold Cup by a head. Political force was third, and Sun King was fourth in 201 and 1. Number five, Carlin was first. Number six, Lawyer Ron was second. Number three, Political Force was third. And number two, Sun King was fourth. Results not official, Cup Classic will bring you right Hill for the Breeders' Cup Classic sent on their way to a perfect beginning. Any given Saturday, Ryder's foot nearly came out the irons at the break, but he broke beautifully. Now he has hard spun. Hard spun going up to take over. Lawyer on right there at the rail. Any given Saturday between them. Now the great Diamond Stripes runs up on the outside, and George Washington going to take back into fifth. Street Sense very smartly has taken back now. Nine lengths off the leaders, and Curlin. Curlin Street Sense, they race alongside of one another. Awesome Gem second last, and Tiago is quite content to give them 15 lane start early. Into the turn they go in the classic and hard spun has ensured a good pace. Lawyer Ron is right there down at the rail and Diamond Stripes is in third. Any given Saturday in fourth. He's being nudged out a little as any given Saturday. He's five off the leader. George Washington already the rider earning his money as he's having to ride George Washington from fifth. Then we come back to Curlin. Street Sense just waiting patiently down at the rail and Street Sense 11 off the lead but running nicely. A gap of six to Awesome Gem and Tiago. A half mile to go in the Breeders' Cup Classic and Hard Spun goes on. Hard Spun by two to Lawyer Ron. Any given Saturday, Diamond Stripes has gone, as is George Washington. Curlin and Street Sense are making their runs now. Curlin fourth, Street Sense down at the rail. And Street Sense is threatening to run a big one. Street Sense and Curlin, they've got to get to Hard Spun. Lawyer Ron did not go on. Any given Saturday, they was never really happy today. A three-horse race as they turn for home in the big one. Hard spun, but Curlin is breathing down his neck. Street Sense literally scraping the paint, but Curlin strikes the front, and Curlin is powerhousing home. Hard spun, Street Sense did not go on, and it's all Curlin in the race of the year for horse of the year. It's Curlin in an absolutely stylish performance. Curlin and Robbie Allen. was last at the was a derby rematch but in the end curlin all the way as they get ready for the 2008 to buy for the right, get that gate get that gate oh the mean tap is in they look ready oh, racing in the Dubai world cup
way out from the inside and premium tap both a little slow to go Jalil dropped out to the tail of the field Gloria De Campo began well so did Asiatic boy Wellarm goes up on the rail Curl in the length the way fourth and wide lucky find and Vermilion on his inside Premium tap pushes through in the centre and then AP Arrow. Sway it on the rail on the inside of Co Cab. Jalil out deep making ground after a slow beginning and Great Hunter had dropped out to the rear as they worked to the back of the track. 1450 metres left to go. Well armed the leader. Three quarters of a length over Asiatic Boy. Curl and a half length away third and three deep. Premium tap fourth on the inside of Gloria De Campo. AP Arrow is out three wide past the 1200 metres mark. A length and a half to Lucky Fine, then Jalil on the outside of Japan's Vermilion. Kokab a length away and a break of four lengths to Great Hunter. And Swayed had dropped out to the rear. 900 metres left to run in the great race. Well armed, three quarters in front of Asiatic Boy. Curlin's a half length away on the outside. He has those leaders in his sights. Two lengths to premium tap. A break to Lucky Find. AP Arrow. Gloria De Campo. Jalil on the outside. And further back is Great Hunter as they turn the corner and see their reflections in the giant cup of gold. 550 metres away. And Robbie Alvarado asks Curlin to go. He moves up on the outside of Asiatic Boy. Well armed on the rail. But Curlin takes the lead. 300 metres left to go. And it's Curlin moving away from Well Armed. Then Asiatic Boy, lucky find, Great Hunter on the outside, but at the 200 metres mark, it is Curlin. Curlin is four lengths in front of Well Armed and Asiatic Boy. They're battling out second and third. Curlin leads close to the winning post, and from the red, white and blue corner, by TKO, the undefeated champ, is Curlin. Curlin has beaten Asiatic Boy and Well Armed. Then AP Arrow and Great Hunter. Lucky find, Jalil, Gloria De Campo, further back, premium tap, followed by Swayed, Kokab and Vermilion came in last of all. And they're off. Red Rocks gets off to a good start, so to Sudan, and mission approved on the inside. And Sudan is very anxious to get to that lead, and so too, mission approved. So those two, they go out in a speed duel in the very early stages here of the Man of War. they got a long way to go in a speed duel head-to-head -head already. It's eight, nine lengths now, back to Red Rocks, a distant third. Curlin came out in good order. He's fourth and on the outside as they move into that first turn. Then Grand Couturier down toward the inside. True cause in between those two. And stretch running better talk now. And he's got a good pace to run at. The opening quarter was absolutely ridiculous. 22 and 3 fifths seconds as they make their way around the clubhouse turn. Mission approved, seemingly on a suicide mission. Alongside Sudan. Those two will hit the back stretch run together after a most enervating opening half mile. 47 and 3 fifths seconds. They're nine lengths. Ten lengths make it over Red Rocks running along in third. And Curlin has settled down beautifully with six furlongs to go. He's just coasting. Fourth on the outside, a distant fourth he is. Just to his inside, it's true cause. Just in behind them, Grand Courtier. And Better Talk now is still muzzled and suppressed at the back of the pack. Three furlongs up in one, 11 and four fifth seconds. Mission approved and sedan. They've been at each other head to head the whole way. There's still one, two, a long way ahead of the rest with a half mile to go here in the Man of War. And then it's Red Rocks. Who is running in third? It's another 4-5. Curlin has been given his cue now. Curlin is asked for run as they round the far turn. He's about 12, 14 lengths maybe from those dueling leaders with three furlongs to go. So it's Sudan who has a narrow lead. Mission approved is second. Now it's five lengths and Red Rocks, a Breeders' Cup winner, is now running in third. And Curlin is in an all-out drive. Set down for the final furlongs on the far outside. He is still third. Sudan's to catch, but he's been softened up. Curlin and Red Rocks both coming. Red Rocks is in front. Red Rocks is the leader coming down to the line. Curlin is there. Here's better talk now. Breeders' Cup winners. One, two, three under the line. And Red Rocks won. Red Rocks won. The grass was not greener for Curlin today being defeated. And better talk now was third. The time for the...
and they're off in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Wandering Boy wasting no time, and he's going right after that early lead. Merchant Marine flashing some early speed, but it's Wandering Boy who's going to be first round the clubhouse turn. Merchant Marine has come away running in second. Ravel is third. There's A. Piero now who moves up fourth. And Curlin is now back running in fifth position in the early stages here. Mambo in Seattle has found his way to the rail already. Now about seven from the front. Then Angliana and the trailer is Stones River. And the leader, Wandering Boy, with his typical tack up and on the pace. Merchant Marine prompting him through a quarter in 24 and three-fifths seconds. A. Piero in the clear on the outside third. And then it's Ravel fourth toward the inside. Robbie Alvarado has kept Curlin out of harm's way in the clear on the outside, running along in mid-pack, about six from the leader, Wandering Boy. The opening half mile was 48 and three-fifths seconds. Mambo in Seattle has moved up a couple spots. He's now fifth. Curlin has lost a spot. He's now sixth. At the back of the pack are Stones River and Angliana. There's four and a half for longs to go here. The leader is still Wandering Boy who rolls along, furlong after every furlong with Merchant Marine not far behind. Curlin and Mambo in Seattle are now just three from the front, and they've run three quarters of a mile in 113 flat and around the far turn. Wandering Boy still in front. Merchant Marine makes a final move at him with three furlongs to go, and outside of them, the daunting presence of Curlin as they make their way toward the top of the stretch. Mambo in Seattle is in an all-out drive, and he's still back and forth, and the field turns for home, and it's Wandering Boy in front, and Curlin with a final try for that lead as they come down to the mid-stretch marker, and Curlin has taken the lead. It is Curlin now in front. Wandering Boy fights on. He's a half length behind in second. And then farther back, it's Merchant Marine third. And here he is, Curlin, under the wire, beyond cigar, and into the records books. He is America's richest racehorse. Wandering Boy was second. All set for the $5 million Breeders' Cup Classic. Gates open, fields sent on their way to the roar of the Santa Anita crowd. Go between broke beautifully on the inside, but Casino Drive now going up to lead them. Fairbanks and the red cap is in the center of the track showing speed, and Duke Marmalade, dark colors right behind them. Then it's smooth air. Colonel John in the white cap forced to go a little wide. Henry the Navigator is racing back in 76 lengths off the leaders, and here's Curlin. Gold colors now. He's got four horses behind him. Curlin very comfortable, but he's a good seven lengths off the leaders. Then it's Student Council, Ravens pass. Tiago is back second last, and Sean's Elise content to trail 15 off the leaders. Past the seven eights they go. Victor Espinosa has Casino Drive. Just at a steady pace here. He's not flying. He's in front of length. Fairbanks tracks in second. Go between has taken a beautiful hold in third. Long rain. Go between looking nice in the third spot. Up alongside of him comes Duke of Marmalade. Just in behind those two is Smooth Air. Colonel John on the far side. Only four lengths off these leaders. And it's another four lengths further back to Henry the Navigator. Now here's Curlin in eighth. Curlin has given them eight lane start. In behind that comes Ravens Pass and Student Council racing side by side. Tiago's a good 11 off the leaders and Champs Elysees is still last. Into the turn they go now and Casino Drive along the inside. Taken on now by Fairbanks on the outside. And now here comes Duke of Marmalade to tackle them and Curlin, Curlin, gold cap on the outside and look at Curlin go. Is this believable? Curlin on the outside. Colonel John trying to go with him. Ravens pass. But now it's Curlin made this huge run. Can he go on? Whip comes out on him. Ravens pass down the center. Henry the Navigator is running on. Colonel John on the inside. Curlin now in deep order. He has to dig deep, but it's going to be Ravens pass to take him on. Along the inside, Henry the Navigator is coming home gamely as well. But it's going to be Ravens pass to win it. Ravens pass and Frankie de Torre have won the Classic. It'll be Henry the Navigator second. Tiago ran on late to be in a photo with Curlin for that third spot.